Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of In Range. We are at the Arizona Two Gun Match at Cowtown up uh, just northwest of Phoenix. Yep. Very similar to Two Gun Action Challenge Match, it's a little bit different scoring system. First Saturday of every month. Yep. At least that's their goal for now. We can put more in the links below. But this is another venue for us to do some interesting testing of guns. They tend to have a little bit more diverse environment in terms of range. Especially longer ranges. Yeah. This, this range is fantastic. So what we have is, yeah, we've done this before. We shot the SP-1 versus your GAL-5 Troy replica before. Yep. But what we didn't do was something unique. You have that. Yeah, so last time I had a single point on here, which included I gun sight, predecessor to the red dot, basically. This time, instead, we're going with kind of what was the standard in some ways, this is like the, the high-speed tactical version of the AR-15 from about 1970. Yeah, I would say Cart best of breed, right? From yeah. that period of time. I'm sorry, exactly. I'm going to cut you off. Yeah. I've got collapsing stock, I've got the short barrel, and I have a Colt 4 power, 4x20 scope on here. Which is pretty horrible, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it's helpful or not. We're going to find out today. Yeah, so it's kind of like looking through a drinking straw. I dubious that it's actually for power magnification. Boy, when we zeroed this thing, it's like, it feels more like about two power, I think. No, but what it does do is it still brings the target and your sight picture into one plane of focus. Yes, that's true. So you do not need to worry about sight alignment to the right. same degree you do with that. And it does make targets more visible. It does make them larger. So. If it's 4X larger, I don't know. <laughs> but this is another interesting inc circumstance. We're talking the 70s here. Yep. And honestly, that scope is worse than a World War II era ZF4. I don't get that, but we've seen a recurring theme of that where post-World War II, some of these scopes, I, hmm. I think the ZF4 was just a particularly good. Maybe setup. that's the way yeah. to go. But what we got here is you've got best of breed, yep. high speed, low drag AR-15 carbine. I should also point out, I can use the irons under the scope, oh, which yes. I will be doing probably most of the time. For some of it, we'll, we'll discuss that through yeah. the stages. But yep. the goal here is high speed, low drag, top of the end, the best of breed equipment at the end of the Vietnam War. Yep. With a magnified optic, yep. magnified. And bone stock M16 variant AR-15, no forward assist, no blast deflector, triangular handguards, uh, stock issue gun. Yep. Now we're both going to be using 30 round mags. This is not a mag capacity challenge, right. but what this is, is just a debate and a discussion about how much better was this Yep. to this, to the guy in let's say 1972. And on top of that, how do these things hold up today compared to what we've got today? Oh yeah, good point. So we're going to be shooting these old school ARs in a modern match. Yep. Does it matter? We'll see. Let's find out. We'll move on to stage one and we'll go from there. All right. All right, so first stage, we skipped the walk. We forgot to video the walkthrough here. Yeah. So we have a fence prop. There are four black dots on the fence, and there are three steel targets between 100 and 140 yards. Mm -hmm. uh, mini Ip6. Yep. And the idea is from each dot, you have to hit each steel target once. Yep. And Pretty some simple. of the positions are a little challenging. One's kind of low. One has some support because there's a rail behind it. Yep. And there's a dot, another dot. So 12 hits. All right, let's shoot it. Let's shoot it. All right, shooter uh, ready and stuff. Sure. Stand by. Clear. Cheer ready. Stand by. I thought it was just me. <laughs> 
So we just shot the stage? Yeah. How did it go? Uh, better for you than for me. Okay. <laughs> so first thing I'm going to point out is I've got this nice giant welty bruise, which isn't actually... Ah, oh, I, I didn't do that. It's not actually that. You're actually being beaten up by an AR. I am actually, you know, I have said a lot that I've never had a rifle that actually caused me problems as a left-hander, except for bull pups. This is the first exception. With some types of ammo, this in fact ejects at such a backward angle that the brass is actually bouncing off my cheek. Now obviously the fix with that is a, is a brass deflector. However, you can tune your springs right. to prevent that too. Yeah, and we may do that on this gun at some point, but yeah. you don't see it in the video, but that entire course of fire, every piece of brass was bouncing off my cheek. Which doesn't help you shoot a better score. It was kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, I actually, I did notice if I was resting the muzzle on the fence, mm -hmm. I did start shooting high. Yep. Uh, which is, a, I mean, it's a known thing. It's a very lightweight barrel. Some of the AR was trying to mitigate, ARs later tried to mitigate that with H-bars. Right. Which helps. Now that's not the whole reason for an H-bar. H-bar is all for, for heat dispersion and all that stuff. But H-bars also will help you prevent deflection when you're using a tight sling or resting the barrel on something. Right. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately it was just a matter of finding targets and engaging them, and you did that a lot faster than I did. Did you use the scope or the irons? I used all scope. You used all scope, okay. Yep. And I thought that was actually pretty helpful. Um, I was able to kind of pick up targets over the top of the scope mm -hmm. and then drop down into it. I didn't spend, I didn't have any issues where I was like just hunting for targets. Okay. Um, well, I shot really well. Uh, let me say the SP1 is fantastic. The AR and its original guys, or the original M16, I think didn't need much modification. Yeah. Um, there are things that are now modernized and made the gun better. But in terms of this being a lightweight, capable, accurate rifle with the iron sights that we're provided with, uh, it is capable of that and certainly handily capable of that. Yep, if you got the skills to shoot it, that rifle will do it. I still have the bad trigger in here, but an SP1, a lightweight AR, this six and a half pound gun, if you know how to shoot it, this is an accurate laser beam gun. They yeah. are just great. They really are. One in 12 twist, fantastic. Yep. You shot it in how much? What was your time? Uh, 99 yep. to your 51. 51. So in this instance, the scope was not a force multiplier sufficiently no. enough. 
to make a difference, at least at 150 yards on Mini F6. Although for me, I may have been, I, I think I probably was still better off with the scope than I would have been without it. I, I would agree with that, and there's two reasons for that. One, the scope puts everything on one plane of focus. Yep. And two, I do have a longer sight radius, and a shorter sight radius absolutely makes a difference. And this was very much a test of marksmanship skills. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where you excel. Well, well that's true. Several places. Well, all right, fair enough. Anyway, let's move on to uh, stage number stage two. two. I just fell, that's all. Oh, you, uh, I just fell. Sure it's okay? I just fell. All right. Good. Keep going. 